Greetings, Earthlings. Oh, dude, I can't do that well. Greetings, Earthlings. You might need to see a doctor. I, I might as well, actually. But um, today, we're getting back on the podcast game. Uh, some of us have been a little busy. Uh, we're trying to get back. Obviously, there's kind of like a dead zone a little bit when it came to football, doing our vacation. So now we can just hit the, hit the season running real hard. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, welcome, Matt. We, lo we love having you on here. We're going to hopefully not get too biased into our talk today. Um, but we are going to talk about the NFC East. Um, the changes, obviously, uh, the draft, the Eagles have been talked about a lot. I've uh, been on TikTok uh, doing some TikToks about Jalen Hurts and the Eagles, and people have been just roasting me um, about that. And Jalen Hurts has been getting some heavy... Uh, MVP votes already. He's He's been already placed in the, I think, top 10 or top 8 in the sense of winning it this year. So wanted the to... the odds? Oh, yeah. Like yeah. the Vegas odds? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Top 8. Oh. So that means that yeah, he's higher. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but he's higher than Kyler Murray about getting it. Um, I don't, I, I don't exactly remember like other players, but he's, he's like around 8 or 10 in the time, in like voting. So I, I kind of... Whatever. We'll, we'll get into it more. Let's just say that I'm uh, very uh, disgruntled and confused by that. But yeah, we, we wanted to just talk about it. Hopefully uh, we won't be too biased. I don't I don't think that I am, but I mean, that obviously I'm a Cowboys fan, so I'm going to have some sort of bias and I watched all the games. So Matt, let's, let's get into it. Um, let's just do, let's start it off with... Um, predicting the season this year obviously you know the cowboys won it last year um the eagles made the playoffs still they're a wild card they played the bucks they got just hammered by the bucks last year and then the cowboys uh we were expecting them i would say my uh desire was them to at least win one playoff game you know mm -hmm. the season looked pretty good we had the 49ers at home. I thought that we would outduel Jimmy G. Obviously, we lost. So I would say that it was kind of a sad season for us. And then the Commanders or Washington football team at the time, um, you know, a lot of people had aspirations for them, you know, saying or, you know, they got Fitzpatrick and their defense was super stout the year before. So a lot of people had them, you know, winning the division, but the Cowboys overtook them. And then the Giants are the giants and so hopefully you know maybe they'll see some more uh, progression but we haven't seen anything from them yet so let's go over so last year it was cowboys eagles washington football team and the giants so what yeah. let, let's ask you uh and let's just let's say this me and hack me and matt watch a lot of our division i i would say that we probably have watched the Cowboys at least for the past four or five years, almost every single game. So, you know, we have a, we have a pretty good judgment of like how the division's going to go. I predicted that the Cowboys were going to win last year. Matt was probably the same. I'm sure. And they did I actually got their schedule exactly or their record. Yeah. Right. But you know, our group text will, will announce you as a biased person or at least me, they probably don't care about you, but for me, they'll say I'm biased. Um, but yeah, let's let's uh, let's get your rundown uh, for win totals and one through four. What what you think? Okay, win. Well, before I get to win totals, I think it'll end the same as last year. Mm -hmm. Like I think one through four is the exact same. Um, I do think that I'll be more on the Eagles than you are. Uh huh. Um, because I genuinely like I struggle. Part of me wants to put the Eagles first. And not people are like, oh, the 11 years there hasn't been a back to back winner. This is the most irrelevant stat in the world to me because, one, if you're going to say that, then it's like, oh, well, then there's bound to be a back to back winner soon. So why not this year? Right. Uh, and but also, and the year changed so much. The year, the year that Dak got injured, we still ended up, I don't have it in front of me, but I'm pretty sure we went like seven and nine and we were like second. And then the commanders ended up winning the division going like seven and nine or something like that. I don't remember, yeah, but you was, could tell that if Dak was, was playing the entire year, 
you know, it's it's yeah, still what if, but yeah. I mean, if we had our starting quarterback after week five, I think we would have won the division. So yeah. I, I think a lot of a lot of the, that historical stuff is 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 trying to get people. Um, I don't know. It's like they're trying to cause a stir a little bit. That's that's my opinion on it. I got yeah, it's, I, it's a good talking point. Yeah, yeah. I I understand the Eagles argument to an extent. But now it's getting way too much. Like, I get it. Like, oh, that one person that's like, hey, guys, I have this, like, take. The Eagles could win the division. I'm like, okay, yeah, I see it. And then everyone's like, oh, Eagles are winning the division. Like, it's it's yeah, up for yeah. the Eagles. That, that's, like, what I'm seeing now. Uh, and we kind of, you know, I was speaking about it a little bit earlier when it came to, you know, the Jalen Hurts uh, talk mm-hmm. about, you know, top eight quarterback in the sense of MVP, which I think is insane. But um, yeah. but yeah, keep keep going. Uh, okay. I'm, yeah, I'm just so I angered. Think, so <laughs> yeah, I think it'll. So I think it'll break out the same. Uh, I think by the end of the year, it'll be Cowboys, Eagles, Washington, Giants. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's hard to tell, obviously, because clearly the NFC East is one of the weaker divisions. Mm-hmm. Um. But yet, even so, people talk about how easy of a division it is, but then people are hyping up the Eagles so much and even the Cowboys. Like, mm-hmm. So it's kind of confusing to me. It's a little back and forth on both, I guess, just because Washington and New York. But right. um, as far as win totals, so this, is, this might be my bias coming out. But looking at last year's, and, and you and I exchanged texts, obviously, multiple times about the season. And... During the season, there was a point, I think, going into our bye week, we had one win. Or, I mean, one loss. Mm-hmm. I think we were like 5-1 or something yeah. like that. There were, uh, after that, there were people it, talking about a legitimate Super Bowl for us. I, uh, I looked I, I looked at our schedule, and I texted you this. I could probably pull it up. But I remember texting you that we potentially could win like 14, 15 games. Like, I was looking at our schedule, and I was like, giving us a loss to Arizona. I was giving us like a couple losses here and there, and I was... But I was looking, I was like, oh, we'll probably win this game, probably win this game, probably win this game. Like, early should win win all these games. Right, right. And so we, theory, we had a favorable like... match. We had favorable games as well. Obviously, it's difficult yeah. to tell, um, you know, you want to give us wins like the Broncos, but that's always going to happen. I mean, even the greatest teams, uh, the Bills last year lost to the Jets, exactly. right? Um you know, the Bengals lost to the Jets, or maybe the, I don't remember. Bills lost to Jaguars. Colts lost, lost to Jaguars as well in the last game. So every really, really good team, you know, is yeah, going to lose games. those games. Right. It, so it, you're playing professional athletes, mm. even though they're a worse team, like on any given day, if you have your worst and they have their best, like, you know, anything could happen. But so I was looking at that, thinking, I genuinely think. As far as our record last year goes, the Cowboys underperformed. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess, like you're saying, by the same token, like most teams aren't winning 14, 15, 16 games, so maybe right. they didn't. I mean, when we uh, look at like a Vegas but... total or something, a lot of a lot of times the top teams are being projected around you know 11 and a half or like 12 yeah, wins yeah. or so. So you know, there there's always going to be those those games that you lose, right? So yeah, but. Uh, just from the fact of like we could have, and, mm. and in theory should have, and right? We're like hot. we were favored yeah. in those games. So I look at this year's schedule, and I still put us at twelve wins. Mm. Um, and I think that's higher than what I don't know what the like Vegas total right now. Under. I think it's at ten. It, it yeah. started so it started at ten and a half, which I thought was correct, and then it moved down to ten because there's a lot of now over hype or you know. I'm extremely biased, but there's overhype with the Eagles, so they they had to give the Eagles a win or whatever, and so mm-hmm. that in or directly, I guess, puts the Cowboys yeah. back like half a win, because a yeah. lot of people now are coming in on the Eagles, so the line has to uh, correct itself. So yeah, now Vegas is uh, putting us more of at, at a ten win now. Yeah, and without breaking down the schedule too much, it's like okay, I have us winning. Both games against the Giants, both games against Washington, and then splitting with Philly. Mm. Um, right, so that's five wins right there. The we just, in my opinion, just get right um, because of a weak division. 
And then obviously you look at like the non division games and tough teams. I genuinely think there are a lot of tough teams on our schedule, but I think all teams that were better there are several that were better than um Texans, Jacksonville, uh Titans. Like I have us beating those you know, like mm-hmm. so there are teams that and then like Vikings, tough matchup should be a win. Um Is that at Minnesota? E, no, yes, yeah, yeah, it is. So that one right, so tough, tough. So tough matchup, but I think we're better than them. Detroit, we should win. Bears, we should win. Oh, um, wow. So then, we're, wait, we're playing the NFC North and the AFC yeah, uh, yeah. South. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So so you have Colts, right? Like, tough game. Yeah. Um, you have the Rams, obviously tough game. You have the Bucks, obviously tough game. Bengals, tough game. Um. Um, and uh, I, I don't have the schedule in front of me. I probably should, but don't we play the first two games at home and aren't they against the Bucks and the Bengals? Uh, hold up. Oh, wait. I'm looking at the Eagles schedule. Where's Cowboys? Oh, right there. Um, wait, what did you ask? I said, aren't our week one and week two Bucks, Bengals, and aren't they both at home? The, yeah, they're both home games for right. Cowboys. So, yeah. I. I think it's fair to say that we'll probably win one of those two games. Uh, yeah. People are probably going to just hammer me for that and say, oh, uh, Bucks are going to beat us, Tom Brady, and then, oh, Burrow's going to just throw 400 yards and five touchdowns on us or something. But, I mean, I we're at home both of those games, so you would mm-hmm. think that we should be able to sneak a win against one of those. And then we'll be playing yeah. away against... Probably, I mean, if you just named all those teams, I'm assuming that then most of those would be away games, and you would think that we should be able to take care of teams like that, like the, you know, Texans or Bears or Lions. Or... Most of our away games are actually the easier teams. I mean, we have at the Rams, um, and at Packers and at Vikings, so those are difficult. Mm-hmm. Um. But then we have, like, at Jacksonville, at Tennessee, like, so, again, not, like, Tennessee's not an easy team, yeah. but, I mean, that, that's I a mean we flip. talked about this, we think they overperformed last year, so right. based on that, and, and I, I kind of think, yeah, and I kind of think Bengals overperformed last year as well in the playoffs. Oh, yeah. Uh, don't, right, let Miles, like, don't let Miles hear you on that one. Um, I'm not saying they're a bad team or, or saying that they like didn't deserve to be in the Super Bowl. You yeah. still have to win. I mean, game, like everyone has. I, I I I I don't know if the Vegas line is is set for that game, but you would think that we would be favored. I think. Yeah. Right. If, I mean, if we're talking between those two games, if we're going to win one between Bucks and Bengals, I would pick that we'd beat the Bengals. Right. But um, at the same time. The Bucks aren't going to have Godwin or Antonio Brown in the first game of the season. Once again, week one, we, you know, dueled the Bucks. I think we only ended up losing by around two points. They're going to come at home, like come to us at home for week one. Uh, I'm, I'm just looking at in like a, a Vegas gambling standpoint, but I know that we're three point underdogs to the Bucks, and we're yep. at home. And like I said, it's one of those things that I think that they're overvaluing that a little bit. And I don't think we should be like a field goal underdog to them at home. Right. Um, but yeah, I so, think, I think it's fair to say that we should split. I think, I think that yeah. is, is a decent take. And, you know, those so, are our, probably two, one of our two hardest opponents at the beginning of the yeah. season. And Very then true. like what you said, we have an easy division. And then those other games for the most part should be wins, you know, uh, outside mm-hmm. of, you know, the Rams, the Titans is probably a coin flip, and then the Vikings, I would say, is probably a coin flip as well. But you know, we we have a favorable schedule, and we we should be able to pull out ten wins, and we should be a playoff team. I think is fair. Yeah. So I have us. I have us at 12, 11 or twelve wins. If I'm gonna like what my prediction will be before the season starts when NRF when we talk about it, I'm gonna say twelve. I'm gonna, I might be a little optimistic there for sure, but. Mm-hmm. I, essentially, I would go over on the win total. Um, Especially, at, I mean, if it is at 10, which I think it is, at that point, yeah, you, we only have to – unless they only win nine games, you, you won't yeah. lose money on it. So yeah. I, I, I like that. Like I said, when I first saw the line, I thought 10.5 was correct because my mm-hmm. first 
guess, and this is before the schedule came out, but I assumed that we'd win 10 or 11 games. So at yeah. that point, there's no real like value. But I was telling people that people were going to get cute and start betting on the Eagles. I knew that would happen. I said mm -hmm. it in the – I actually listened to our old podcast with Miles, and we were minus 115 to win the division, which basically is like a coin flip almost, um, maybe a little bit higher. Maybe it's like 52% chance. But I knew that people would get cute and start betting on the commanders and the Eagles – and I don't have it in front of me, but I think it's around like plus 120 now. So there, there's some, there's yeah. definitely some value on the Cowboys. Uh, so I'll, I'll finish my yeah, go ahead. My prediction. So obviously, like I said, 12, um, 11 to 12. I'm going to take the optimistic 12. Um, Eagles, I put it nine or 10 wins. Uh, I think obviously the same thing. They should beat um, Giants in Washington and then split with us. Mm -hmm. I just think they're a worse team than us. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll get into it, but worst quarterback play. Um, yeah, they have a good team around them, but a worse quarterback. And I think it's even if you want to say that the Eagles have a better team around their quarterback, it's not a big enough gap to make up for how much better Dak is than Hurts. I, from what I, we've seen, I have Hurts, to ask. Right? I have to ask this as well. Um, okay, who's the worst coach in the division? I mean, I would say the Cowboys have the worst coach. You think? Who's who's Philly's coach? Um, they have. A, um, I don't have his name. Like it's like, it's like Sirianni or something. Yeah, I just don't know. Yeah, no, yeah, Sirianni. Sirianni. Okay, I didn't want to like fumble it, but like I knew it in my head. Um, and then so the, the reason... I think the Giants got the offensive coordinator from the Bills, who I think he probably is going to be pretty good as well. And then Ron Rivera, I think, is the best coach. So yo, I that's think a, hands down. So that that's my argument to people in because uh, for those watching, I made a TikTok. Go to my TikTok at Alex Blasig. But one of these guys, Peter King, he does these preseason rankings, and he ranks the Eagles at number nine. And so my argument to everybody because they say, oh, the Eagles have this roster. They just got they have the best receiving core, and uh, all they, their roster is insane. We have no gaps at all, and blah blah blah. But I always have to revert to the question, is your coaching good and is your quarterback play good? Because there are a lot of teams uh, below them that I believe should be higher. Um, the Raiders is one. I'm even low on the Broncos, but at the same time, I think the Broncos are better than the Eagles. I even think the Broncos are better than us, I would say. But so here's, here's my question. So you think... You think Sirianni's worse than um, McCarthy? Yeah, I think I think before, and it, it's not even just him; it's a coaching staff altogether. And we we've kind of talked about this okay. um, in the in the past. Um, it, it when it really just comes down to it, and I said this last year, I said it's either going to be him or Jalen Hurts that will get fired. And I'm still I, I still want to continue that take on it next year because if Jalen Hurts doesn't perform. This year, I mean, he's got everything now. Like, now is your third yeah. year. Uh, you've had two years now. Um, you also, he also played through a lot of college, I think, unless I'm wrong on that. But, I like, now, in, I, it's the same argument with Tua. Like, now you have everything. You have this great mm -hmm. offensive line. You got these great receivers. Everyone talks super highly of Miles Sanders. Uh, their defense is good. They got that defensive tackle. They got uh, the cornerback, Bradbury. Now their whole roster's up to them. So for when I'm looking at that, it's either now we're either having, if they don't perform next year, which everyone's saying that they are, but if they don't like win a playoff game or win the division at least, I mean, it's got to be Sirianni or Jalen Hurts that has to go at that point, in my mm -hmm. opinion, because if everyone's talking about them, which I do agree that they do have an insane roster, but, I mean, all eyes on these players are, are either on them or the coach. So, I mean, I think we have a very good coaching staff. And it also goes back to, like, success in, like, an organization – like, have the Eagles mm -hmm. really had, like, a lot of success in the past? I mean, I think their Super Bowl run was pretty lucky, in my opinion. But but, but by that token, you can kind of say it's similar for the Cowboys. Although, I mean, I think, yeah, Cowboys have done well. But it, when they get to playoffs, 
they do nothing. Then right, but I think I think we're just talking football. about the regular season here. I'm not really saying yeah, like in the sense yeah. of playoff, but I I even even though people laugh about us of being like this like choke team or whatever, I would say that we still fight for the most part. Like, yeah, we could be kind of like, you know, talk about the Tony Romo years and stuff. I still think the Cowboys were in that top 10 talk like all the way through yeah. right i mean yeah so i don't know I, I i might be like too much on that take but i it i've been watching this uh this atlanta falcons documentary in my free time and there's like seven um seven youtubes on like every single like 10 year decade of their team and they've just been like historically just like a trash organization. So mm -hmm. I just think that that needs to be like talked about a little bit, you know, like if you think of Alabama and teams like that, that have, you know, always kind of had success. I think that at least has a little part into it in, in my eyes. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. Even like just with the Cowboys stuff, like Stephen A, who obviously is notoriously like against the Cowboys, right? Like people know him for his anti-Cowboy takes. That's mm -hmm. not all they know him for, but that's like one of the things. Uh, for him, it's always like when the Cowboys are hot, he's always like, oh, I'm, I'm just waiting because with the Cowboys, what can go wrong will go wrong. And essentially what he's saying is, hey, despite how good I know the Cowboys are, I just know something's going to happen, whether it's a fluke, whether it's just somebody's best game. What like essentially when he's saying what can go wrong will go wrong, he's saying something will happen that's outside of like the normal scope of what should happen. Right. And that'll end the Cowboys season. Right. So it's like, even with that, you're saying, he's saying, yeah, I recognize that the Cowboys are hot typically. Right. And um, I, I could be wrong, but I thought I saw one of his power rankings where he had the Cowboys and this is stupid. Like we shouldn't even be talking about him, but uh, I think we, we did see that. Yeah, he, we'll, we'll or, move on I think this. I remember him putting the Cowboys in the top five, but basically what I'm trying to say is I think most people will at least admit that the Cowboys are like a good team. Like they're above average at least. And when it comes down to it, usually it's like around the playoffs where people think that we're going to flop. Right. I think that's like fair. Um, Basically, my so, argument was yeah. once we make playoffs or we're always in the conversation of making playoffs. I think that is a fair yeah. take. Yeah. And we're always an above average team, yeah. but people and we're not talking about that. We're talking about winning the division or, you know, being relevant at least or making the playoffs. I think most people can at least assume that. And they're more talking about game yeah. one, you know, we haven't hit that next level is basically what it is. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I have Eagles about nine or ten wins. Uh, and then I have Washington. I, I mean, we're, we're just continuing to turn like seven, eight wins. Mm -hmm. And then Giants, six, seven wins. Yeah. I, uh, maybe five. Um, okay. But that, that seems real low to me. Yeah. Mine, mine would be Cowboys. I'm gonna go let eleven wins. I I wouldn't okay. want to say ten, but I have us over the Eagles, and I was gonna put the Eagles at nine. So I would like to like have at least more of a cushion there over them because I I want to make a statement that we are better than them. Uh, so I'll go eleven for Cowboys. Like I said, I wouldn't bet on it or anything. Maybe if it dropped down to ten and whatever, I already have like Cowboys bets, so we don't even have to get into that. But Cowboys 10 or 11, sorry. Cowboys 11 wins. Eagles 9. I think they're in the playoff talk again because once again we're talking about strength of schedule here. We're not talking about actual teams that should be mm -hmm. in the NFC. And that goes for the Cowboys too. I'm not saying that yeah. we're we're that good. I mean, you place us in the division like the AFC West or the NFC or AFC North, I don't even know like we're I'm going to get scared that we won't make the playoffs like for sure. Right. Um right. and then I would say Commanders are 8 and 9 and then the Giants are probably like 7 and 10 or like okay. 6 and 6 and 11 maybe. Yeah. Um so another thing that I wanted to like talk about a tiny bit is it's one of those things and I've been I've been gambling for the last like year taking it really seriously when it comes down to like learning trends and stats and all that kind of stuff. But I think and I, I kind of touched base on this a little bit before but I understood the Eagles winning division argument. 
but that time has like already passed and I, I've kind of like people are directing it way too much. There's that one person that can say it and be like, okay, yeah, I could, I could see that. But now it's, I, I think there's a lot of people that think the Eagles are going to win the division now. I, I, we, I, I haven't seen like any polls or anything like that, but now this is like more of a hot take. Commanders win the division. Is that insane? Dude. At it, least in the sense I mean, of a gambling, a gambling aspect. Um, it's a hot take for sure. But, like, I think uh, a take that I'm okay with people having. Like, obviously, it's a way hotter take than saying, oh, Cowboys or Eagles will win. I'm more, I'm more saying in the sense of, like, a value, like, gambling aspect. Um, I think it's worth it. What's, because do you it's, know? like, plus 600 or something insane like that. So that I mean, you're basically like six xing your money. I, I mean, I think, what, what were they last year? Uh, no, they were like plus two hundred. But but like, what was their record? Oh, uh, eight and nine, seven and ten. Okay, so yeah, NFC's. seven and ten. Okay, so they were quite a bit off. From... Right. So. This is this so is I, this is kind of uh, it's it's like it's just like stocks, right? It's a buy, sell high, buy low. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Selling high on the Eagles right now, they're way too high. I think Vegas correctly placed the uh-huh. the uh, and I was saying it before minus one fifteen. I thought was fair, and people were asking me, should I bet the Cowboys right now? I said no because watch, all these people are going to get super excited about the Eagles. And this is before the draft. This is before, which I admit, they did have a good draft. Um, or like, you know, not necessarily draft, but they got, you know, Brown and stuff off as season. well. Yeah. Right, offseason in general. But I knew that this was going to happen. And so now, and this is coming from someone who has been very uh, directly hate hater, a hater against Carson Wentz. But I can also say that there is a chance that he can just have a freak season and mm-hmm. have like a, I don't want to say like an MVP run or anything like that, but there we could, you know, at the end of the year be talking about him as like a top 10 quarterback. I think that, or like top 15, maybe. Yeah. Top 15, I think it's fair, but I think the chances of that happening, I feel better than even the Eagles or at least. Really? Them, I, I, I think so, Cause it, or at least when it comes to Hurt, when, or when it comes to Wentz and Hurts, to me, I trust Wentz, mm-hmm. Ron Rivera, that mm-hmm. defense, like that happening, at least in the sense of value, I, I always talk, I'm, so I'm speaking in the I, sense I do, of a value, yeah. when, when we're well, gambling, when we're gambling, I'm thinking of a gambling standpoint, right? Let me, let me just say this. Cowboys, I would say probably like 60% chance winning the division. Eagles are like 25% chance. And then I'm like 15 commanders. And that that's mostly Hurts coaching and then Wentz having this, because he is like a do or die type player, right? So it's just the chance that Wentz freaking goes off this year well in, and they're coaching last and year, last year people had the commanders up there you know what i'm saying like yeah, they, were, they were they were plus 200 or something why are they now all of a sudden plus 600 i mean maybe in the sense their organization's kind of like falling a little bit but they i they do have like an okay roster for the most part i don't know yeah i i think there's some upside from... with them yeah, the defense last year was really hyped up, and they didn't meet that expectation. Mm-hmm. I feel like they should have much better. They should have a much better season this year than they did last year. Like they looked bad at times. Um, yeah. Like they didn't even look like an average defense. They're supposed to be one of the top defenses, and they looked below average. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they'll get back to maybe not elite. Like maybe we just. They're not who we thought they were, um, but they to me they they are better than what they showed last year, um, and 
like you said, Ron Rivera, incredible coach. Um, and with what you said about Wentz, like we do know his upside. Like he does have a very high upside. Right. Um, and honestly, all these quarterbacks do, right? Like we know Dak has a, has a good upside. We know think, Hertz has a good upside. I think Hertz, Wentz, has, Hertz but, has upside. We just haven't seen it yet. And we haven't seen it. We haven't seen it really more we than like. We have seen it with Wentz. We haven't seen Hertz upside, in my opinion, for a whole four quarters in a game. Like, I think you're speaking garbage there. time, for my opinion. Uh, what do you mean? I think he succeeds in like the fourth quarter when no one cares anymore. Well, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying is like we haven't from start to finish seen Hertz have a game an entire four quarters where he's shown his upside. Yeah. Outside of so whether like maybe the Lions last year, but right. that's the so Lions like, who got the Whether you know, it's the garbage thing. time or just like a few drives here and there in a game, like you mm-hmm. don't see a full game put together where you can look at and say, for the most part, like this guy is going places. Right. Um, whereas you have seen that from Wentz and you have seen that from Dak. Um, but, I mean, if we look back at the Eagles – um <clears throat> Super Bowl run. I mean they mm-hmm. they got it they got the Super Bowl without Wentz. Mm-hmm. Um and so this isn't even Wentz, I'm kind of transitioning to Eagles is um So you're saying quarterback yeah. play doesn't necessarily like matter that much. If you have the right team and you have the right run, it doesn't necessarily matter, but mm-hmm. I think it matters more in the regular season. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, anything can happen in the playoffs. Essentially, yeah, I I, I right? agree. Like, I agree with that take as well. And I've been saying that to a lot of people in my comments, like on TikTok and stuff. Um, I think the Colts are are a good team that could win the Super Bowl this year. I they could have mm-hmm. like a Rams type situation, and people might say, "Oh, you know, the Colts aren't that great." Blah blah blah, whatever. But they have a favorable division. I mean, Texans, Jags, uh, Titans. So, yeah. I mean, that's their division to lose. They get into the playoffs, and, well, you know, last year we were talking about it as well, and, you know, I'm not necessarily like a Wentz fan, but if you got a guy like Matt Ryan who's been through it before and they play a team like the Bengals or something, I I think right. they can win that game. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, but, it, but to, to the, like, whole conversation – Yes, I think Wentz gets thrown under the bus a lot. Not saying he shouldn't, but when you look at the playoffs and you say, well, the Eagles won the Super Bowl without Wentz. So did he really matter that much to that team? Mm -hmm. Right? That's kind of – and there's validity, obviously, to that question. But all that's needed to win a Super Bowl is a stretch of, what, three games? Yeah. You just need three good games from a quarterback. Right not 17 to get into the playoffs. So that that difference matters, obviously, right? Mm-hmm. And so to say, okay, who am I going to get the best play out of for a, a full stretch of 17 games? You're going to get the best play out of Dak over that stretch. You're going to get the best play out of Wentz, and then you're going to get the best play out of Hurts third. And so I think that actually makes it, if you if you add that to better coaching, to better defense then i think there i think you're right there is validity to the take of like right maybe the, maybe the or maybe the commanders do take the division right and i, I don't want to i don't want to like be out of context here because like i said i have like a i and this this is a problem with me and i don't want to say casual people but like i think of it as like i know the lines in my head right And so I just think now what I'm basically trying to say is I think there's less of a chance that the Eagles win the division than most people believe. And I think there's a higher chance that the commanders win the division than most people think. It's a, it's a sell high on Jalen hurts. Number eight quarterback MVP season. No disagree. And like Wentz is this garbage quarterback that is being tossed around NFL teams. So no, let's he does yeah. have high upside. There is a chance. Like even last year, he 
how many picks did he throw? Like seven interceptions. Of course, like probably in those moments they were bad, but there is this like tiny chance that he plays like a freak and now he's this top 10 quarterback and he throws all over the division and, you know, they have a very good coach. I mean, Ron Rivera is top 10 coach. I mean, probably mm-hmm. higher than that. Uh, they were talked about highly last year and then all of a sudden they're this garbage team now. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking of it as you always want to pick those teams that no one really is talking about. And that, that's kind of what I'm saying. The Celtics are a prime example. Yeah. I've been saying that to y'all for a while. I've been calling the Celtics. It's one of those teams that, Oh, the Celtics are always, you know, garbage and blah, blah. blah and they always choke in the end, but now they're in the finals. And that is kind of my Tyler hero take. Everyone talks about Tyler hero. He's this great six man of the year, blah, blah. He's in a uh, freaking Jack Harlow song. And everyone's all hyped about Tyler hero. But when he played eight, games in the playoffs he didn't really do that much so Mm -hmm. i'm taking that like opposite opinion as the casual fan and i'm i'm throwing ideas out that no one's really talking about that's that's kind of like my well and the the hard point and like we've seen this obviously play out in the real friends group text your sports takes are solely maybe not solely but primarily based on what you were just talking about, betting odds and value and what you think is going to happen based on, or like in comparison to like what most people think. Right. Um, But that doesn't necessarily equate to how good or bad someone is. Yeah. You know, like there, there is, it's a, it's a little bit different. You're kind of talking apples and oranges somewhat. Um, or maybe you're talking, it's all apples, but different types of apples. I don't know. Yeah. Um, there, there just is a little bit of a difference in that, which is fine. But it does change the way yeah. it's talked about. I, I, think, so, I think my thing is this, it's the psychology of the humans to all, like, start taking yeah. this opinion way too much. That's kind of, like, what I'm mm-hmm. saying. And so you have to start, like, slowing people down on that and mm-hmm. start – Going back to like actual takes, I I don't know. Like, yeah, I got when I saw people putting tickets into Jalen Hurts winning the MVP. At first, I'm like, okay, yeah, I mean that could happen. You know, he's surrounded by really good um, your roster, and you know he's put in a perfect situation to where he can thrive. Into now, he's the top eight MVP. You know, to mm-hmm. me that that's like insanity. And so yeah. I have the, I'm having that same take when it comes to the Eagles. Yeah. Okay, Eagles, you know, we run this simulation of the season four times. Yeah, they probably win it once. Or we run the simulation three times. They win this, the division one time. And now there's people that are saying that they will win the division. They will win the division. Which yeah. I'm going back to, we have Dak. We have, like we were three games better than them last year. We lost. We we're playing Tony, like confirmed playing Tony Pollard on the field with Zeke at the same time, right. which can open up our playbook immensely of what we do. Right. It'll and, be a great receiver, like in the slot, even because that's, I think what we're going right. to do with him. Yeah. And let, let's, let's take our conversation into that. And then we can kind of like, you know, summarize, conclude, whatever. But yeah, I guess let's talk about the Cowboys, like how we feel about it we can run through the, you know, our losses and our gains or whatever as well. So go, go on your tangent about this. Cause I'm, <laughs> I'm all, I'm all ears and here for it. Uh, yeah. As, as bad as our off season was, our roster is still, in my opinion, better than any other roster in our division. Um, you can maybe break down certain things and say, yeah, I think the Eagles have certain areas where they're, where they're better than us. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the very least, I think even in those areas, they're not that much better. Mm-hmm. So, so we look at our quarterback play. I think Cowboys are better. We look at our running backs. I think the Cowboys are significantly better. Most people would say um, Eagles, by the way. 
I, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> I know. I'm just saying it's insane <laughs> to me. It's insane because last year the Eagles struggled so much on the run, and I'm not necessarily saying it's a running back problem, but even if you look at the their game against the Buccaneers, I think Miles Sanders had like six carries, which is insane to me because that team should be a running team. They need to run the ball mm-hmm. 20, and I feel the same way about the Cowboys, but – they need to be running the ball like 20, 25 times. But yes, I, I just want to say I've been seeing a lot of Twitter takes and I don't know if I'm getting these like Twitters purposely flaming me or putting a bunch of Eagles fans into my feed and like purposely making me sit on the app or something. But I have seen a lot of people say that the Eagles backfield is better than ours, which I think is crazy. And Brent would probably say that that's true as well, but. Yeah, I'm looking up like Miles Sanders stats beat out Zeke stats. I guess we're about even um based on stats from 2021. Um the ironic thing is the Eagles starter has the same yards per carry as Tony Pollard who's our backup. Mm-hmm. And then Kenneth Gainwell who's the backup for the Eagles has the same pretty much yards per carry as Zeke who's our starter, but mm-hmm. um I think as it plays out, I, I still think you have to, and this is definitely the biased take. I, I'm just not completely sold that Zeke is completely washed. Um, it, once in a in a in a, gam, he, he, in a gambler's mindset, once again, it's a buy low opportunity on Zeke. Yeah. Uh, there have been you know Twitter talks that you know this this could be the first time that he's actually healthy. That's um, what I was going to say. It's not even necessarily a full Zeke thing as well. And that's something that you were getting into earlier. It's a Pollard and Zeke. Mm-hmm. Now it's a dual running back that those two backs are, I mean, they have to be at least in like the top five in the sense of the NFL as a combo thread. Mm-hmm. Um, we, I, and I knew this was going to happen. I've been saying this for a long time, but you know, you lose Cooper, you lose Cedric Wilson, you have to put Tony Pollard on the field now. It, it, yeah. it's, it's one yeah. of those things that why would you not? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Why would you um, handcuff both Zeke and Pollard when those two guys are, you know, some of our best athletes in the in the sense of and carrying see, the football? And we know what their strengths are. And right. their strengths are in opposite places. So, like, right. uh, Pollard's a better receiving running back. Yeah. So let's put him in more positions where we can run screens to him, where we can get him in open space, where we can kind of do different things with him. Um, we'll have two running back sets, mm-hmm. and that's going to throw teams off. Zeke's significantly better at blocking; like he's that's another thing that, that, that like, no one talks blocker. about. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's got to be one of the blocker. he's got to be one of the best running back blockers it, in the NFL. And so, and that was what I was going to say about the health thing is. Like yes, I you know I don't think Zeke is completely washed. I don't think he's as, he's gonna ever be as good as his best years, right? I think his best years are behind him. Um, so I don't want people to think that I'm on Zeke so much that I think he's gonna be as great as he ever was. But I think he's better than he's he's he still has years in him left, better than the last couple. Yeah. Um, he's gotten in shape. Um, and he was in shape last year, but he's he's had injuries. And so, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Is that just something that's going to constantly plague him and, and he'll never, mm-hmm. you know, be as great? And that's, you know, certainly possible. But I think as it stands potential-wise, I'd rather take Zeke and Pollard over Miles Sanders and Gainwell. Oh, like easily. Um, sure. Every time, every time, yeah. right? So it, maybe it's closer than what I said of, like, for sure. I mean, it's still a for sure thing, but it may not be, like, you know, it's not like they have a bad backfield in right. Philly. But um receivers, I think especially after um their trade with AJ Brown, but it, it gets I think the Eagles probably have a better receiving core than we do. How uh how high do you think in comparison to the league that they have? Say that again? <laughs> like what top what do the Eagles receive? Oh, for? in the league. Yeah. So, well, so here's my thing. I don't know much about the rest of their receiving core other than A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith, and Rager. Mm -hmm. And I don't even think Rager's their third. Like, I'm looking at the depth chart. And uh, Quez, Kez, 
was, yeah. I would assume. Watkins is there, uh, is listed as their um, wide receiver three. Mm-hmm. But um, I know wide receiver play can, it, it just changes so much. But um, with those two, I mean, I put them top 10, I feel like. I, I saw, with just those two. I saw, but, a po- I saw a post that they were top three. That's so my so mind, high. my mind's like Bengals, uh, Rams, Vikings. I, I think that alone is better. I, I, yeah. I I'm not gonna like name more, but I, I, I think, I think I maybe in, top ten. In the, yeah, yeah, I put them in like the five to ten range, probably. Yeah, I mean, I just without with without thinking through um, all the other teams. Yeah, I think uh, Devontae Smith just just hasn't had as, enough time for me to say well i don't know i guess because we could when we talk about like jamar smith i mean jamar smith jamar chase um here here, here's like here's my here's my thing on it yeah um i think smith is good um brown my problem with brown is that the titans seem so very willing to get rid of him which i i thought was kind of strange to me that's at least like a question mark and i mean Mm -hmm. we could have used the same mentality with like amari cooper and we traded for him and everything like that right so i'm i'm just like hesitant to be naming like aj brown as this like top 10 receiver uh just because of that alone like confuses me a little bit and yeah yes they might have the like two really good receivers and dallas goddard as well but yeah Who's their quarterback? <laughs> I think Jalen Hurts is one of the most inaccurate quarterbacks in the NFL. And his strong suit is not throwing. It's running. He's a he's a runner. That's where he gets his, uh, his strengths are running is basically what I'm saying. And throwing off of the run. But like in the sense of like a pocket passer, he, he's got to be one of the weakest quarterbacks, at least as of now. And yeah. I was watching, and this is stupid, but I was watching his highlight reel, and it was like 20 minutes long, and half of the highlight reel was him scrambling, and then probably five minutes of that highlight reel was him throwing these insanely contested throws that were like the receivers were making these incredible catches. I don't know. It was just like, is this his highlight reel, or is it just... I just didn't see in the sense of like him being an actual like quarterback, him like having success. So that's kind of my mentality with it. Like, sure. Yes. Y'all do have a great receiving core, but you have to know that they won't succeed unless Hertz succeeds. So I just don't see that. Sure. Does he have potential? Yes. I'm one of those, like, see it to believe it type people. Hashtag at, Jesus, sorry, I didn't, I didn't want to pull that, but <laughs> it's just like <laughs> you can say that so many things. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I just lost all the Christian, like anyone that's oh, a yeah. Christian, like, hey, I'm a, I'm a Christian, so <laughs> yeah, you yeah, don't have it. to leave. <laughs> right. No, but it's just one of those things that, like, I want to see, I want to see you succeed first before yeah. people start saying Eagles are going to win the division. I and that's always. Everyone's like in my comments yeah. when the sense of the TikTok, like, oh, like, yeah, he has mm-hmm. all this potential, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yes, I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. When we're talking Eagles number nine team, Peter King's power rankings, yeah. it's, it's one of those things like, sure, can I see that happening? Yes, maybe. But like, why are we already placing them number nine? Why are we already putting the Eagles winning the division? We, we, we're better three wins better than them last year. Like, I don't know. That, just... That's like that guy. I know this is a little off topic, but that guy that you in the podcast text, uh, Nico, I don't even know, but, uh, the tweet was when Tua oh. Tagovailoa wins MVP this season, where will you rank him? And I'm like, that's such a stupid question because right. he hasn't shown us a single thing that would lead me to believe he'd even make playoffs let alone win an right. mvp i, I right? think like i think when it comes to me i have to i have to compare the nfc east to something i have to 
And the only way I could do that is last year. Last year is the only Mm -hmm. thing that I have. So all Mm -hmm. these people are in my comments saying, well, they got the defensive tackle. They got Brown and Jalen Hurts is on his third year and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, all right. Oh, and they got the cornerback and y'all lost Cooper and, you know, blah, 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 Collins and everything. And I'm just saying, like, what what happened last year? We were better than them by three games. We played them one time or two times. I I, I don't even want to count the last game because people are going to come from my throat with that. But when we did play them, we murdered them. Like, it yeah. was really bad. It, it was so that I, I'm one of those, like, shit talkers, but I almost felt bad talking shit to Brent because when that happened, I was like, oh, yikes. Like, we just beat y'all by 30 points. And then... Once again, let's look at them playing an actual team last year when they played the Buccaneers. That playoff game was really bad. Really, really Mm -hmm. bad. The first half, they were down by like 21 points and they had no life. And then at the end of the game, they started scoring these like garbage touchdowns. And then, you know, people were talking about them as a good team. But I think my argument here, and I'm saying the same thing about the Cowboys. It's not just the Eagles, but... When we compare teams in the sense of power rankings, it's not fair for the other teams for the the Eagles to be in the ninth slot. There were a lot of teams in that in that list that I think are better than the Eagles almost easily. Uh, the Broncos, the Raiders, um, the Colts were super low. The Cardinals were at like twenty, and I don't know. I I just think if if I looked back at the Eagles. Winning, and you can once again, you can say the same thing about the Cowboys, but like, let's just we need to talk about this. The Eagles, in their like nine wins that they had last year, beat all these very bad teams. Mm-hmm. And once you put them against like actual competition, they lost. So, so yeah, so he, and here's my final thing because I did say like I am more on the Eagles I think than you are. What are what's your Eagles? I'm a I'm a statistics person. What's your like percent chance that they win the division? See, I would put them like Cowboys 60. I think you did Cowboys 60. I would put them at 60 as well. But you went 25. Yeah. I would say like 35. Okay. And then I would give Commanders a 5% chance. Okay. Um, I almost think it's like pretty much a 60 40, but I do want to throw some. Yeah. I mean, you have to. Something towards the commanders, it's, right? I, I don't think, and we haven't really hit on it. I don't think the Giants have a chance at all. Yeah. I, I think they've done some good things. I think they'll, well, I don't even know if they'll be better. They'll be, like I said, I guess six, seven wins. I kind of do maybe think five, but um, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see. I guess right. I don't think they're much better. I think. We I just we Cowboys, haven't seen we haven't seen it like a lick of success from them since Eli Manning left, and that yeah. that's I I'm still kind of like on Daniel Jones like I think it's fair that they're still giving him a chance just because I, I think it's more of an organization thing than it is mm-hmm. him, uh, and I think now you know you're bringing in the Bills offensive coordinator and you know he yeah. had success with Josh Allen and Daniel Jones he can run i mean he's a he's a sneaky runner yeah, so i think this year he could succeed and then Barkley's been hurt but yeah i mean i i don't think they can like win the division or anything but i mean are they capable is their like highest uh ceiling them winning eight wins I, I mean maybe do i think you know they're more likely to win six or seven yes yeah um yeah. so yeah uh but I, yeah i mean i see that i, I, I look i look at like when I look at it as a whole, Cowboys, I I don't think we can say at all that Cowboys got better this offseason. If anything, I think we got a little bit worse. Yeah. Right? I, I think that's clear. Um, I don't, And so at best we stayed the same, but I don't – I think that even is a, a little bit positive of a take. Mm-hmm. Um, well, there's a lot more I could say, but I'll just say that. Um, and so that's why I have us optimistically at 12 wins – I could see 11. Um, I could even see 10, but obviously I think that might be a, a slight underperformance. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think Eagles got better and Commanders got better. And so Eagles went 9-8. and eight. I definitely think they get – they easily hit 9 again this year. I think they struggled to 9 last year. I think they easily hit 9 this year and then potentially can even get 10. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I think 10 is a very realistic number for them. And then Commanders, I think I said 7 or 8. And so, um, or maybe I said 8 and 9. I don't remember. But I think yeah. I think Commanders could get 8 um, and potentially squeak out a ninth win, but probably 8. Um, but because I think that the – because the Cowboys didn't get better but and the Eagles did, that three-game gap obviously pushes – closer to, to one or two games. Right. Um, and that's where the Eagles do... They they do have a better one and two receiver combo, I think, than we do. I really love Gallup, but he's been hurt, right? And yeah. so we haven't been able to see a full season out of him. I think, I think I have seen enough to know that he is a very, very good receiver if he can play, right? right. If he can be out there. Um, obviously, we know CeeDee Lamb's incredible. We we really haven't seen him as a one too much, mm -hmm. and we did struggle with him as a one. Yeah. Um, I mean, he had problems with a lot but, of his drops. And, I mean, yeah. we, so, me, me and you both have kind of said our fair share on, like, Amari Cooper. But yeah. I just think it's not really fair for somebody to come in and say, oh, the Eagles have so much potential. They have you know, Jalen Hurts and, uh, you know, these two young guys, but they can't say the same about the Cowboys. You know what I'm saying? Right, uh, right. Can't you say the same thing about Pollard, uh, Lamb, Gallup, I think the thing is, is Schultz, the, the Eagles have new people, know. right? So it's like yeah. there's kind of – there's some new, um, you know, A.J. Brown. I guess that kind of is the main new. You have some new, new pieces on defense, and you do have new pieces – in spots here and there, but yeah, I th I think the biggest places where they've gotten better, um, are they've gotten high value people, and so there's just a lot of excitement, right? There's been change on the Eagles that caused them to get better, whereas the Cowboys didn't get better, but they still have these people that are really good, some of which on an individual level underperformed last year, mm -hmm. um, or have have. Well, and that can be due to various things, right? Some have had uh, health issues as well. I think our defense will improve, even though we're not changing a ton on defense. I know we've lost a couple pieces and gained some. But by and large, our defense is still, and, and our secondary is still the same. And our linebackers are mostly still the same. And we're getting some, like, Jabril Cox back. And we're getting, like, we've added pieces on defense. Our defense, I think, is going to be significantly better. Mm-hmm. And, and that, that was our best – that was surprisingly one of our better – one of our strengths last right. year. Right, and that, that was one of my, like, digs takes, and I posted a TikTok on there as well, just saying that I think he gets disrespected a little too much. I we, We've kind of had a conversation about this when it comes to, you know, the thousand yards and blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, I mean, he didn't even start playing corner until he was, like, a sophomore at Alabama. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, how many years has that been? Four years? And then last year he was a what? He wasn't a rookie, was he? He was a sophomore? Last year he was a sophomore, yeah. Yeah, sophomore. So, I mean, now it's his third year. And, I mean, you would. I'm not saying that he's going to, you know, put up these insane numbers again. But I think it's fair to say that he's going to be a better corner, you know? Like, can we at least say that? <laughs> Is he going to get worse yeah. at corner? Is he going to regress due to like statistics and will he have 11 interceptions or whatever again? But he's a young guy with potential. He's coming from Alabama. I think it's fair to say that he's going to be a better player. And, you know, same thing with Micah, who I think is a freaking our defense yeah. is Micah. Like when it comes down yeah. to it, he, he's a, like probably already like a top five player in the NFL. Or at least when it comes to like the defensive side of the ball. So yeah, I just know I know by the end of the season, I, I'm gonna be worried really throughout the whole season. But certainly by the end, like I I will be worried that the Eagles beat us. Like going into this season, I'm confident that the Cowboys will win the division. But it's not like it's a walk in the park. Yeah, as much no, as it was I, last and I, year. I, and I'm not saying that. I and that's what I don't want people to get like consumed by i mean i think 60 percent chance is saying that i think that the cowboys will win the division that's kind of what i'm trying to say i just say it's one of those things you you were kind of saying it before people are getting excited and when people get excited they start saying incorrect things is, is kind of yeah. like what i'm going back on and that's kind of my take in the sense of gambling right and i talked about the commanders earlier 
no one's talking about them. You know, they everyone's like ruling Wentz out and he's trash. But at the same time, last year he showed a lot of success. And if that happens, and you know they have the best coaching, or Ron Revere is the best coach in the division, and if their defense like can get it together, I think uh, Terry McLaurin is the best receiver in the division as well. So if if all things kind of like work out, I think that's going to be a team that can succeed for sure. Another um, thing I really love for us, uh, uh, for the Cowboys, is our bye week is week nine this mm-hmm. year. I, I just love a later bye week, obviously. And there's only two games. What only do we two have, what we have last year? Okay. Last Seven. Year. Oh, okay, yeah. But, like, in comparison, when I mean, this is kind of crazy, last year the Eagles had a week 14 bye week. That's nuts. And then they ended up winning the last, like, four games of the season. I they think. they won four out of the last five. One of those was week 13 prior to the bye week against the Jets. Oh, then and then they, they, they lost to us, which they basically just threw that game, right? But yeah, they, so they, I, I'm still we'll, under the we'll assumption last that we would, have, we would have lost, or they would have lost. They to lost them. to the Giants 13-7. to Hurts, and I'm looking at Hurts' stats in the last part of the year. I mean, he had a game against the Lions. I mean, I guess because the deep, but like, they won, a, he had, they won 44-6, to he had 103 passing yards. Wait, no way? Yeah. Wait, what? I did not uh, know that. I thought I lost. saw somewhere that he had like 300 plus yards on some team. I I just was under the assumption that was against the Lions. So uh, he, he had, had 380. He had 387 against Kansas City, 326 against us. Those are the only two 300 plus. He had a hundred both of those were yards losses. against the Lions. He had 190 against San Francisco, 198 against the Panthers, 115 against the Bucks. 103 against the Lions, 162 against the Rams, 178 against Denver, 147 against the Saints, 129 against the what? Giants. Um, I don't know what he had against the Jets because Minshew had 242 and that was better than him. Yeah. Um, he had 199 against the Giants again, um, and then against us he didn't play. I guess so. That's what I'm saying, dude. It, it's. I, I just don't get where people are just pulling out of their ass that Wentz is going to be this, like, insane quarterback, like this top 10 guy. Whereas Dak didn't have a single game in the hundreds. Yeah, for sure. And last year, he probably, what do you have, like 37 touchdowns and like seven interceptions? Uh, I saw I saw a take today on TikTok that Jalen Hurts... He had 4,500 uh, passing yards, 37 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. I saw a take on TikTok today that Jalen Hurts is barely worse than Dak. I, 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 it's just like, what are you... I, I, I just... I, I honestly think people now, are just pulling this... I will... <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I just think people are just like, are they actually looking at the statistics? Are they actually watching the games? Are they actually watching the tape? Like, I, I don't know where people are coming up with this information. So Hertz had basically 1,400, 1,350 um, less yards. So about 1,400 less yards than Dak. Mm-hmm. Um, 21 less touchdowns. And he did have one less interception, but he okay. had, but he had twenty one less touchdowns. Right. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I it, he, it really had... it really bothers me a lot. That I mean, that's why I came on here. I will I will continue pushing that narrative until I can hear something else. Once again, I haven't really like went back and watched like a bunch of his tape, but I watched a highlight reel of him. And it wasn't even impressive. The highlight reel that I watched, I was sitting there saying, "This is a this is a Hertz highlight reel." Like it, it just, I wasn't impressed with it at all. I, I just I don't understand. He's not a pocket passer. And may, I, I mean, sure, you can have success like running the football and stuff, but I don't know. Even last year, oh. the, the Eagles were struggling to even run the football a lot of the time. And you go back, yeah. I mean, you're looking at their schedule right now. Go look at the teams they beat. They beat the Lions. They beat the Commanders two times. They beat the Giants one time. Uh, I think they beat the Broncos. Um, 
the Raiders, yeah. maybe. It was just they like all the Panthers. There no, wasn't a team. The there wasn't a team on their schedule that they beat that made the playoffs. And I know people yeah, can say the they, same thing about the Cowboys or whatever, but I mean, they beat the Falcons week one. They beat the Panthers week five. They beat the Lions. They beat the Broncos. They beat the Saints. Those are their two best wins. No Jameis Winston, by the way. Uh, true. Um, in both of those games, he had 178 against the Broncos and 147 against the Saints. Um, and then they beat the Jets, um, which he didn't even play in, actually. Um, then they had bye week. Then they beat uh, Washington football team. They beat the Giants. They beat Washington again. And then that was it. But yeah, he had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He had eight games. So literally half his, over half his games, because he didn't even play all 17. He played 15 games. Yeah. Eight of those, he didn't even reach 200 passing yards. I don't know, man. So I, that's, maybe, maybe that's I'm... clearly, that's where the Eagles, like, won't win right like that's what if they had a better quarterback i would absolutely be saying oh if they had if they had i don't want to say josh allen if they had um i mean switch switch quarterbacks yeah right or let's just say like Derek carr if Derek carr was on the eagles i would be afraid i would be afraid yeah. i i would say Russell i would Wilson? oh yeah i would take eagles over us <laughs> I really, yeah, I, just, I mean, I would. They do. I, I mean, I know, I just, that's what I'm saying. It's to me, it's just such a quarterback gap. Like, there's a major quarterback gap, and so it's just one of those things that I'm just not scared. And we're we're gonna play them at home, and I think we'll beat them by like two touchdowns. And I'm I'm just really not afraid. Like I. It's one of those things that if people want to say Eagles, like I just I want to hear I want to hear something like I don't know. We're like we're you literally for the last minute have said all or even longer have said everything that I've been trying to push to people and they just won't listen to me. They just won't listen. So it, it to me, it's just like Cowboys hatred bias slash super excitement over the draft and over the offseason. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to it. I think our rosters are pretty like I I would take the the full roster of the Eagles probably over us but or maybe like it's pretty close but the the QB gap is it's really not close and sure if you want to if you want to pull the potential card the superstar potential card sure pull that on me but can we at least not wait a tiny bit before we start making these like assumptions like I I just don't I don't know where it's coming from. Yeah. I looked at their schedule last year. I saw the teams that they beat. I looked at Jalen Hurts' stats. I watched a whole ass highlight reel of Jalen Hurts. And I've watched my team for 17 games. And I, I know what we're capable of. And I'm not saying that. I don't, need, I don't think the Cowboys are a top 10 team. I don't think we are. But this isn't about that. This is about who wins the division. I trust the mm -hmm. Cowboys more than the Eagles. That That's just my take on it. And I'm just going to say it now because I've been saying this over the last several years. Um, I just want to put on the record before preseason, you're going to see the Cowboys lose every single preseason. Oh, game. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, oh, I, yeah. I am betting, uh, I'm betting us to lose every single game and I, also on the under because we do not care. We will score 10 points. We, yeah. We, uh, that is like I've, been, I've said it for years. We just don't like our and, and it's just been the fact that like our starters are good and then our backups are horrible. We won their twenty twenty one, so last year we lost every preseason game. Yeah. Twenty twenty, there was no preseason because of COVID. Twenty nineteen, we did win two. Mm -hmm. We lost one, two, lost two. Twenty eighteen, we lost all four. <laughs> uh, twenty seventeen, we actually won three out mm -hmm. of four. That's McCarthy. McCarthy probably wasn't coached then though. No, McCarthy wasn't coach. Um, yeah. But then, yeah, 2016 lost three. Once again, there's there's 2015 gonna, lost three. There's and gonna we be don't care, there's so. gonna be overreaction on stuff like yeah. this. People, yeah. the casual football fan, will overreact about shit like this. We will go. Our preseason is at Denver, uh, at Chargers, and then home against Seattle. So three, maybe we'll I win that one. <laughs> so, so maybe we'll I'm win. Still, that I'm one. taking Seattle that game for sure. <laughs> it's one of those things, like. 
we know what happens. I, I, I was watching the preseason last year. I was watching the games and people like to give me shit. They're like, why would you bet on preseason football? But it's like, Matt, this is like the perfect opportunity to gamble. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it yeah. doesn't make sense, but it does at the same time. We know that the Cowboys aren't going to try, and there's and probably. I was telling, I was telling you game after game. No, I did. I bet the against the yeah. Cow. I was making money off of the preseason, and I was yeah. betting the unders as well because a lot of the unders were set at like 40 points, but our games were like 17 to seven, and they were all going under. I was betting yeah. unders and against the Cowboys every single game. I remember that uh, the Cardinals game i was like laughing because we were just getting murdered and it, we yeah. didn't care we, we do not care um, and teams aren't even playing to win they're playing to evaluate right so they're they're like calling plays that this isn't going to get us a win or this isn't like, this isn't what we would maybe call in the regular season but right. we want to see what this will look right like. and that's what i'm saying i bet you anything we're going to lose at least two of those preseason games and the, mm -hmm. the lines are going to start shifting and saying, oh, the Cowboys, they don't look great. And maybe the Eagles are going to go out there. They're going to try. And then there's going to be even more unwarranted hype about a stupid mm -hmm. preseason thing that all these people that don't know anything, or I don't want to say don't know anything, but they're just overreacting about the dumbest shit. And so right. these people are just going to start jumping on the Eagles even more. And I'm going to say, all right, cool. I'm going to freaking bet on the Cowboys. Then. Um, but yeah. And then I want to hear your take on this and then we can kind of like end it. And this is kind of like, once again, going into that thing, but guess what the line is. Eagles at lions. Week one. The line. So it's at Lions. At Lions. The fact that you're asking this, I'm going to add, I guess, more than what I would normally I mean, guess, guess what you would normally, because uh, that's probably okay. Because I think you kind of like have a pretty good idea of like what the spread is. So I would guess... At Lions and Lions are bad. Mm -hmm. Plus seven and a half. No, it's 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 only four and a half. Okay, I was I, so I was actually gonna say uh, five. Okay. Uh, I was thinking I was literally picking between four and five, mm -hmm. but I was like the fact, and I know you said not to do it, but yeah. I was like you were like indirectly. the fact that you asked it, yeah, it just can't, I couldn't right. get that out of my mind. Yeah, but I was gonna say between four and five. Yeah, so I'm just gonna say this much, and people are gonna disagree with me, but I'm I'm taking the Lions to win that game, baby. At least in the sense of like a wow. value standpoint, because it it's just one of those like. And I can't wait to like have the conversation when it comes to us talking like week one lines. But it's once again, it's going to be people overreacting about the Eagles again. Um, Lions are going to be one of those teams that are going to be like dogs. They lost a lot of close games last year. They're at home. Um, and then even near the end of the season, they started kind of like showing their potential. They did. And they did. It's one of those things. It's just it's it's going to be overreaction on on a team like the Eagles that people are getting excited, but there's going to be a lot of things happening week one that people aren't going to expect. And I'm not necessarily going to say that they're going to win, but I don't necessarily think that the line should be any higher than like three. I mean, I think that's like a field goal game. Um, so that that's kind of my opinion. And I'll, I'll ask you this question now. Or, and like I said, at least when in the sense of a value standpoint, I'm going to be on the, I'm going to be on the lions. Like I'm going to be taking that disgusting play. Um, and I'll ask you this. What do you think the line is Bucks at Cowboys? See, I imagine I would think we should be favored, but I kind of think they have it um, Bucks minus one. Minus three Bucks. Minus three? Right. Once again, away game uh, this makes a lot of oh difference oh my gosh so yeah. matt so matt if this game were be were be played at buccaneers they would be nine point favorites because you have to add sit like three neutral and then add another three to you know what home okay field. So is that I mean this, am I wrong but is that not insane? I mean this happened last year where we no, were like insane. we were 7 point dogs or I think like seven and a half point dogs against the Bucks at the Bucks and we played them within 2 points and now they're coming to our fields 
we're home. This is game one. Everyone's going to be excited. And they don't have Godwin. They don't have Antonio Brown. And I'm not, once again, I'm not necessarily saying, and I said this earlier in the podcast, that I think that we'll split between the Bucks and the Bengals. So I'm not necessarily saying we're going to win this game. But, I mean, three-point underdogs at home? So I feel, I feel better now about what I said about the Lions-Eagles game because when I made that, I only accounted for three, not a six-point. Oh, so 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 when I said seven and a half, if you took into consideration the other three, that does actually bring it down to the four and a half. Oh, right, yeah. That no. it actually is. So I actually would have been spot on with my four so, and a half so prediction. If, <laughs> if that game was at Eagles, the Eagles would be ten and a half yeah. point favorites, which yeah. is insane to me. Like, I don't think so. Yeah, so I wasn't accounting for that other like three to for both teams. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. In my mind, I was thinking if it was at home, I would think the Eagles would be seven and a half. And so the fact that it was away, or no, I don't remember exactly. Yeah. But I, anyway, so so in a game like that, they're they're basically saying in a Super Bowl, a Super Bowl game, or a neutral field. Say they played in like London or something. The Eagles would be seven and a half point favorites, which yeah. to me that. Even in a neutral field, a team that doesn't really have a lot of offense. And both teams are going to be playing like more slowly a little bit. I don't think seven and a half is is fair. But I bet you anything, if we had freaking Frost and Miles on here or Brent or someone else, they would be telling us that we're like insane and that they were they're gonna take the Eagles. But I'm I'm gonna take that disgusting I so what do what do you think the uh, Bucks Cowboys line should be? Probably like what you said. Probably Bucks like minus one. I, I think I yeah. Or I like closer to a pick mind, I think I, I was think they're say, that's... I think they're about f- four points better than us. So if you yeah. if you put us at home, that's three. So yeah, Bucks like minus one. I think it's fair. I think they should be favored. I think they will win. But the fact that there's three points of value, right? Or, like, I guess it would be two points in my, like, Alex weird, like, right. power ranking. Right. But I, I think in the sense of the line, it's incorrect. And I, I think it honestly yeah. came out at, like, three and a half. And I think people would bet on the Cowboys. But I could be wrong. But I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm really excited about this season because – me now and me last year is completely different. Like I, I know way more when it comes to like gambling and lines and all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to be taking those disgusting home, like home underdog situations. And these are, these are two prime examples that I'm talking about right now. Cowboys at home game one excitement. Once again, we're undervaluing the Cowboys to like a, a pretty extreme extent. A lot of people are counting us out to lose, and then flip that again on Eagles Lions. Eagles are were trash last year. Uh, Eagles had a favorable division. Even they beat them like a shitload last year. They they destroyed them. And so game one Lions. I don't know. Like I just don't think that the Eagles are that much better. I don't think they're like yeah. seven and a half points better than the Lions are. In, in like a neutral aspect. And if we if we're taking the Eagles ten and a half at home against the Lions, that that's insane. I I don't think they should ever be favored that much against anybody. Just because yeah. it's not even just them. It's just like the way that they play. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. they they aren't a team that's gonna put up and they only did it one time, but you were kind of saying it like as a prime example. They're not one of those teams that's gonna put a ton of yards down and be throwing, you know, Jalen Hurts is going to be throwing like four touchdowns or whatever. It's going to be more slow pace, low scoring type type yeah. game. So, yeah, we'll see. Um, like I said, I'm a little nervous. I still have confidence they'll win the division, but um, Eagles did get better, and so we do have to give them that credit. I, I will take back what I said about Cowboys having a better overall roster, but I mean, what we said, quarterback play. Really, Trump it's not all. everything, but yeah. throughout the course of a season, it kind of is. Right. I think I'm I'm just more the standpoint that, once again, over excitement, 
not understanding why people are thinking Jalen Hurts is good. I think, honestly, people want Jalen Hurts to be good. So that's why they're saying that. I don't I don't know if they necessarily actually believe that or if they He's see He's just anything. a little bit better of a Tua, right? Like, yeah. From no, what I we've think, seen in like, Tua. He has higher, like, they're very comparable. He has higher upside than Tua. The, well, yeah. the thing about Tua and Hurts is that Tua's – he can be accurate – but he just doesn't really have the arm. I think, I think Hertz has the arm, but he has accurate. no accuracy. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I would rather have Hertz than Tua, just in the sense that, like, like you said, he fits more of the prototype. He is. He does more. Have more of like the body, and he he has higher ceiling than I think Tua has. But mm-hmm. I agree. Once again, I I, I just. Where we, where we need to see it. Before right, we like can all right, week it, yeah. one. I'm saying it. Like I think there's a chance. And once again, like sure, they're they're probably gonna beat the the Lions, or they could beat the Lions, and then they're people are gonna be really excited. I'm gonna be let's reel it in a little bit. Like they just beat the Lions. I just you you nailed it for probably like two minutes. I'm probably gonna clip that and freaking send it on TikTok or some shit. But you were like. Hurts 170 yards. Hurts blah blah blah. Like here yeah, are the no, teams that they beat. Just, they beat the Lions. Just... They beat the Panthers. These are things that I'm looking at, and I don't think people really know that. Like yeah. I think they're just kind of making shit up, and people are getting real like butt hurt in in my you know TikTok saying that oh I understand why the Eagles should be the ninth ranked team, and I I could sit here naming probably like 15 teams that I like better than the Eagles. Uh, I thought the Colts were too low on that list. The Cardinals were at 20. Uh, the Broncos and the Raiders are better. I think if you put the Broncos and the Raiders, or if you put the Eagles in that division, I think they're fifth. They're the fifth best mm-hmm. team. Um, mm-hmm. Cardinals, I mean, they were good last year. They made the playoffs. And I hate that I'm saying this, but like they're not the 20th best team in the NFL. Some people had them like number one last year for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Let's remember that. Like, let's not get too insane about a little Kyler, you know, offseason drama and all that kind of stuff. Like, once again, Colts, like, okay, they lost one game. Should they be the 22nd rated team? I, I don't know. Like, stop, yeah. stop getting, stop getting so trigger happy about you know placing teams certain places let's let's go back to like the bread and butter let's look at last season how do we do or three point the three three wins better but yeah, yeah we can we can kind of close it off we were going a little tangent i guess and yeah we, ha- we haven't had a pod in a while and you know it's, it's always <laughs> yeah, fun there's a lot to talk about I, so i've had a lot i've had a lot uh boggled in my head because i i just haven't had a lot of time to talk about it and i'm just getting like a lot of yeah. biased takes or whatever. So we'll end there. Any, any uh, last, last uh, takes at all? Um, no, but I will be going to the Cowboys Jaguars game. Oh, uh, it's only, officially. it's like an hour 45. Well, I mean, I sent my tickets and all stuff, but my yeah. dad might be flying down for that as well. So I'll get there after the game starts, but at some point in the first quarter, yeah, for that hour 45 minute drive. So, Alrighty. Excited for that one. Yep. Well, this is Real Friends in Football. Talked a lot about the NFC East. Let us know in the comments. Uh, you can roast us if you want. I'm already used to it, so I don't care <laughs> anymore. Yeah, let us know if we weigh under if y'all think we weigh undervalue the Giants or, or the Commanders. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we did, but let us know what Right. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm like overvaluing a little bit on the Commanders, but like I just I have to be I have to show value of certain teams and I, yeah, I, I feel like I'm, I, I like to rate people higher than most people have low and the opposite on the yeah. other spectrum. That's, yeah. that's, that's what I like doing. So anyways, real friends in football. Thanks for watching for those that made it this far and, uh, yeah. like comment, subscribe, like, subscribe, all that uh, stuff. We should have said that in the beginning. Yeah, I know Didn't... we're bad, but yeah, right, guys.